Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Harris and I'm a very lucky man. I'm lucky because I work in investment banking and I hold the CFA charter, which means that hard work is behind me. But I know some of you are still doing it, so I'm here to help. Now, if you see my other CFA videos, you'll know I passed all three exams first time, scoring in the 90th percentile at level one and two. In today's video, I'm going to step through exactly how I did that. Now, I have made this video before, but I'm remaking it for three reasons. Number one, it's been almost a year and I remembered things that I didn't include the first time. Number two, there's been some curriculum changes, so I'll touch on these. And number three, my first video was terrible, so this one will be a nicer viewing experience. So without further ado, let's go. Number one on the list is still understand your motivation. From my perspective, this is even more important now because since I got my life back, I've had time to reflect on this. Why are you doing the CFA charter? It's going to require 300 plus hours per level, three to five years, huge sacrifice and dedication, so you better know why you're doing it. Are you really that interested in finance and is it relevant to your career path? People often overestimate this. The CFA is super broad and yes, level one is amazing in terms of establishing the foundations, but then it becomes increasingly portfolio management focused, which isn't relevant to the whole of finance. So the point is, make sure you've really thought this through and you're not doing it for the three letters, because honestly, that's not motivating enough when you have to sacrifice your evenings, your weekends, socials, etc. You've got to really want it and honestly, all the value comes from the knowledge that you accrue, not the three letters. I really need to emphasize this. And there's a huge opportunity cost associated with this. So you'll be giving up hobbies, leisure time, social time. And if you've got any other side hustles or ventures that you want to launch, you're going to have to give up on those for a while too. So you've got to be all in. So make sure you've thought this through. Okay, assuming you do want to do it, let's step through prep providers. One of the hardest things about the CFA is the sheer volume and the fact that you have to do it alongside work, which means unless you cut through the BS and get to the most testable material, it's super painful. Now, you can labor through the books or use mainstream prep providers such as Fitch and Kaplan, which are basically boring university lectures, and try and work out what's most testable or you can follow this strategy and save time, money and smash the exam. So the first provider I recommend is Mark Meldrum. Now here I want to introduce the concept of skin in the game. Essentially, you want to be taught it by somebody who has lived and breathed it rather than some academic who just understands it theoretically. This is because the person who's lived it has real life experience and scars and has applied the theory and tested it, thus intuitively understands it and can explain it to you better. Mark has real skin in the game. Alongside having a PhD, he's been a trader, investor, entrepreneur, and so on. So he has real world experience, and that means he intuitively understands it. And so he's brilliant at explaining it. He's not just reciting the curriculum. As a result, he uses real life examples that make it much easier to understand. Also, he's genuinely engaging and entertaining. And so dare I say, it, you'll enjoy studying. Alongside his main lecture material, he also provides seminars, which are super helpful in establishing first principle thinking, more on that later. His review videos are also amazing. As I said, the curriculum is vast and it's quite difficult to review it at pace, especially as the exam season nears. So these videos are super helpful with that. He's also super economical. So depending on the level, it costs 370 to 440 Canadian dollars, which is equivalent to 250 to 330 US dollars. And that compares to a thousand plus dollars for Fitch and Kaplan. So it sounds amazing, right? And Mark Meldrum is, but there's one deficiency and that's his notes. He essentially only gives PowerPoint notes, which are just not enough. And that's where the second provider comes in, which is IFT World. Now this is an Asian provider and they also have excellent lecture material and I actually used it at level one, still much better than Fitch and Kaplan. But their competitive advantage is their notes, which are absolutely superb. They're concise to the point, well presented and focus on the most testable material, which as I said, is half the challenge with CFA given the breadth of information. But these prevent you from having to make your own notes from scratch, which saves you a ton of time which is key given you're studying alongside work. Now I'll touch on that again in study strategy, but the notes are roughly 90% synchronized with the Mark Meldrum lectures, which is good enough and you can plug the gaps with your own annotation. I would also recommend you buy IFT's high yield package, which is an absolute cheat code. The package includes lectures and notes, which apply the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule and focus on the most testable material, which almost always comes up in the exam. And this helps with two things. Number one, with your reviews. As I said, as you approach the exam, it becomes much harder to go through the material over and over again. So having a concise set of review notes, which focus on the most testable material, keeps it fresh in your mind and helps focus your attention. The second thing is, again, because you're pressed for time, you won't always be able to go through each module in the same level of depth. So if you've found you've not had enough time to go through one, these notes again help focus 
your attention on the most testable material, which means you can go into the exam with at least some level of preparation. The main lecture notes range between $99 and $149, whilst the high yield package ranges between $149 and $215, depending on the level. Now, I have secured you an exclusive 10% discount if you use my name, Harris, as a coupon code in the checkout. The links to the notes and packages are below, as is the coupon. Now, let me emphasize, using both Mark Meldrum and IFT for level three, which is the most expensive level, brings the total cost to $694, which is significantly lower than the thousand plus that you'll pay for Fitch and Kaplan for a comprehensive package with superb lectures and superb notes. And as I said, if you use my exclusive discount, you'll get another 10% off the IFT portion of that. So it's a win-win. Generally, the CFA is an investment, so you might as well make it a worthy one. Okay, now let's step through study strategy. Firstly, consistency over cramming. There's loads to get through. If you cram it, you'll hate your life and you won't learn anything. This is a disadvantage as you move on to level two and three because it becomes increasingly application and evaluation based. So if you want to extract maximum value, you need to go slowly. In terms of timelines, I would allocate two and a half years for the full charter. That means six months of study for level one, six month break, six months of study for level two, a six month break, and then six months of study for level three, and then you're free. If you can, try and sit your exam in the Feb or May window so that you're studying those six months over winter. There's nothing else to do during winter anyway, so you might as well work hard and then you can enjoy your summer. Also, allocating six months of study per level allows you to work through the material in digestible sessions of around 90 minutes, which is the optimal amount of time to study according to the Ultradian rhythm, which is a biological cycle that determines how long you can effectively focus for. Now that doesn't mean study 90 minutes only, it just means work in 90 minute cycles, and that might be just a couple a day. So if you do it four to five times a week, you can easily fit this in. If you can do this in the morning for two reasons. Number one, you're biologically freshest. This is proven. And number two, it stops other things from getting in the way, i.e. you're paying yourself first. If you do this, you'll have time to study, work and enjoy some of your life without crying all the time. Right, let's move on to learning techniques. So firstly, do not cram level one. You can cram it, but you're going to hate your life later because level two and three are way more applied and they assume knowledge of level one material. So if you don't have that, you're gonna struggle. Now level one has fully transitioned to learning modules, which are much more digestible than the huge chunks of information that you previously had. And the weights have also shifted away from the theoretical ones, such as quant, FSA and econ, to more applied ones, such as equity, fixed income, alternative investments and portfolio management, which is actually welcome because you use these a lot more in the later levels. So level one will now prepare you better. It's also much more visual, which is again welcomed because staring at blocks of text is very painful. Secondly, always start with the hardest topics, which are fixed income, derivatives, econ, and quant, because these take time for you to understand and you're going to need to review them multiple times. Most of your learning actually happens away from the desk. So you want to work on these in 90 minute sessions and then go for walks and make sure you get good sleep because that is when you work things out without actively thinking about it. Do not start with ethics, even though it's the first chapter, because this is not intuitive you'll forget it all. So I would recommend you approach this later on in your studies and commit it to your short-term memory. Number three is pass through the curriculum at a higher level and then come back and drill deeper. Don't get bogged down in the details because you won't make the progress that you need. And sometimes other parts of the curriculum hold the answers. A great analogy for this is if you were asked to navigate a city, would you like to be dropped at street level and asked to navigate from there? Or would you like to be given a bird's eye view map so you have a view of the entire city and then be dropped at street level? It'd rather the second, that is the way you should approach the curriculum. Number four, I mentioned this, buy your notes, don't make them from scratch. You'll waste so much time because the first run means you are focusing on writing down what the lecturer is saying rather than focusing on the lecture. That just doubles the time that you need to get through the material. So that's a huge waste of time. If you buy the notes and annotate them and make separate notes for the more complex materials such as formulas, you'll be much better placed and can move through the material much faster. Number five is employ first principle thinking. Again, I touched on this earlier. This is so critical, especially at level two and three. So as you're going through the material, constantly ask yourself why, draw comparisons and parallels and links between the curriculum. And otherwise, watch the seminars for the more complex stuff, because this will help you establish that foundational knowledge. If you can do this as early as possible, it will be a superpower at level three, because you need that first principle thinking then. A few tips to make this easier. So number one, employ the Feynman technique. So this is where you articulate your learnings either verbally to someone or just out loud, 
or you write everything you know on a piece of paper and then identify the gaps and now you know where to focus your attention during reviews. With formulas, derive them even if you don't have to. This allows you to just memorize the root and then be able to derive all the associated equations instead of having to remember them all, which is so difficult. If you find yourself memorizing anything, you're doing it wrong. Okay, last but not least, let's go through exam technique. Firstly, as I said, go through the curriculum at least once and then during the second run, start doing questions alongside it. Importantly, you can use your notes when you're answering the practice questions. It is impossible to do them off the top of your head, especially as you first start out, because you need to convert knowledge to application and that takes time. Don't be demoralized if you get them wrong. Half of the learning happens while you're doing the questions. When you get to the mocks, I'd do them under time conditions and then without referring to your notes. But again, if you struggle and you make mistakes, don't worry because often the mocks are designed to be harder than the exams. A good analogy for this is boxers train against opponents of a higher weight class because when they have them up against the ropes and they push them away, it strengthens them. And it means in a real fight, when they're up against a lighter opponent, it's much easier to push them away. That is what mocks do for you. When you do the real exam, you'll be better placed. The question banks have loads of questions, so do them all if you can. Finally, when you get into the exam, make sure you follow these tips. Never spend time on a question where the answer does not come immediately to mind. Use a flag function and carry on, you'll have time to come back. This way you get 50, 60% of the exam under your belt straight away, and then you can use the remaining time on the questions that you struggled with. Make sure you slow down and read the question. CFA are super conniving in the way that they phrase them. They'll use most or least likely and they'll slip it in and you'll gloss over it and then you're thinking on the wrong side of the coin. Importantly, at level two and three, when you have the vignettes, make sure you read the question first and then the passage of text. Because if you read the passage of text first, then the question, then you go back and read the information again. So start with the question, then the information, and you know what to focus on. Finally, a tip for level three, the multiple choice question and the essay slash structured response questions on our mixed, which is a good thing. When you do the exam, do the multiple choice first because they take less time. And that way you have more time left over for the structured response, which is more time consuming. So I would do that level three. Okay, there you have it. Hopefully that's added a ton of value. I hope you smashed the exam. If you like this, then I've got a bunch of other CFA videos on my channel. You can check them out. And otherwise, thanks and see you in the next video.